Okay, so my name is Noah Frankenberg, and I'm doing my project four inquiry project over my project three. Um, I will be doing a video instead of a poster, which I was kind of in dilemma about, but I feel like the video allows me to be able to feel like I'm speaking to you guys, and it allows me and I feel like I'm more in touch with um, your guys' emotions. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, it allows me to get my thought across more. So what I wanted to, what I did my project was about why America needs to keep up our defense spending. And there are several factors about it, including our economy, keeping our allies safe, and our foreign allies uh, economies as well. And so America has been known as the world's policeman and for probably the past 70, 80 years, ever since the end of World War II, because of our constant foreign involvement in helping setting up peace and help setting up these new governments. Um, so right now, the United States has roughly 2 million troops that currently are serving. We have about 800,000 serving, serving in the reserves. And we also have another 1.2 million serving active duty. And we currently have about 200,000 people personnel deployed worldwide and we have these people deployed from the tip of Argentina all the way up to Alaska where we have several stations and that are studying the effects of the North Pole and watching what the Russians do in the North Pole as well. So this does not all come free obviously this all comes with our defense spending what the DOD makes it up to be and that's kind of who I'm targeting this conversation about is why the DOD needs to keep up our spending to make sure we are properly prepared for all these kind of threats that are emerging in the globe. So the United States has several bases deployed overseas and they also have several, base, several bases that are in the United States. And so a recent study found that in Sumter, South Carolina, in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and in Dayton, Ohio, which are three major Air Force bases, that there are about 200,000 people, civilians that work there. Wright Pat is the third or fourth largest civilian contractor in the state of Ohio. And there are 58 Air Force bases in the United States, and they employ roughly 500,000 to 600,000 civilians. Um, which is a huge, huge number in some of these remote locations because a lot of these Air Force bases are in remote, remote locations. I mean, they're in the middle of the country, such as like Kansas, they have them in Arkansas, they have them in North Dakota. And these are really big for the economies there because these people rely on the work because there's not much work around there. So, and these are just counting the Air Force bases. These are not counting the Marine Corps bases that are on the Eastern Seaboard and Western and the West Coast. And these are also not counting the Army bases we have here and not the Navy bases. So we have to think if we cut our spending, that means some of these bases are most likely to close and a lot of these people are gonna end up losing their jobs and which has a negative impact on our economy and hurts, it hurts the relations between the people and the government. So, we also have to consider the bases that we have overseas. Um, in a lot of these countries, such as Germany, Italy, Poland, these kind of countries, a lot of these communities and villages rely on America for jobs because a lot of people will work the base and their whole persona changes about America and maybe saying we have a negative impact but these people are giving us jobs now, so we're going to maybe open up. And there are several German villages and Italian villages who are now completely relying on bases because, and now their whole culture is changing. These people are driving Mustangs, they're driving GMCs, they have American bars, American theme stuff who all want to come to the United States now because they, they realize that America is one of the best countries in the world. Um, but if we close these bases, like we are in Germany and such, because we are not getting adequate funding to withhold them, um, these people are gonna lose their jobs and then to return, this creates a negative opinion towards America. And this, this word spreads, it's just not just stay in these small communities. So I think this is a very big issue that um, needs to be addressed. Um, I saw that 
the bum holder base in Germany um, brings in roughly $200 million a year for the German people that live there in these small villages around it. And so if we pull this out, that means there's gonna be a lot of homeless there, a lot of resentment and word spreads and put it, it spreads around this country because it's not a big country there. So, and the big issue, I think it talks about global superpower threats. The United States has pretty much been the only superpower in the world for the past 70 years, but now you're starting to see a rise of the Chinese, you're starting to see a rise of the Russians, and you're starting to see Iran who is developing its own nuclear missile program. And so these countries like Russia and China are trying to extend their reach of power. So Russia going into Ukraine and Crimea and the Chinese who are building up these islands in the South Pacific, and these are all disputed waters and such, America has to be able to defend its allies who we've had treaties with for years. I mean, we have a ton of, ton of allies that are currently in the South Pacific who are trying to assert their own influence and keep their own territorial waters intact that are being threatened by the Chinese. So the American Navy for years has been slowly cutting funding into these ships. So we're trying to build better ships, but not as many. But with the Chinese who are building these missiles, these all these ships, we have to be able to keep up the amount of ships that we have in the service so that we can continue to have influence in the South China Sea and in the North where the Russians are pretty much expanding too. Um, so really the argument against why American cannot or should not continue that their um, defense program or defense spending is that it can, it can cut into other departments spending. And that I think is not as big of an issue as, as many people think because Many people will not look into the facts and realize a lot of these departments do not spend all of the funding that they actually get. And a lot of it will transfer over to the next year. So even if you just give a little bit more of that money to the DOD, it's going to keep up our missile programs or defense programs, such as shipbuilding, airplane building, and creating our new fifth generation fighters and employing more and more people throughout the globe and most importantly in the United States. Another thing you could say would be a counter of that would be it's none of our business to be around the world. Um, we have bases in Africa that many people don't know about. And we also, we have been known specifically in this little island called Diego Garcia where there's this indigenous population that we moved with the British help back in the 60s and 70s. And many people will say, oh, it's a human rights violation, but it, these people were transferred to another island that was bigger. They were giving bigger housing. They were given plenty of money. So I think that is kind of something that gets blown out of proportion. Um, I think that we as Americans take pride in our military because we have so much respect for these people, but if we're not giving them the adequate funding to do their job, you're going to see a lot of people turn away from the military and not want to serve. And that in turn puts us in danger. So it all comes back to a couple of big things that we can control with our defense spending that keeps the world a safer place and it keeps us a safer place.